Hello there, this is a financial mathematics video talking about compound interest. Compound interest involves interest being earned and then reinvested. The interest is added to the previous principal or even the original principal to make a larger principal, so the amount of money builds up each time. Compound interest is said to earn interest on your interest. So we can figure out compound interest by repeated multiplication. This is kind of like the basic version and there's a formula later. This example, $4,000 is invested at 5% per annum or per year, compounded yearly. In these questions we've really got to look at the word after the word compounded because that tells us the arrangement we make when we're uh, calculating. Find the amount of the investment at the end of five years. Okay, so this involves a percentage increase. Each year, the amount of money invested increases by a certain percent, in this case 5%. So we remind ourselves of how we use percentage increase. To increase by a certain percent, we multiply by 100% plus the percentage we're increasing by. So to increase by 5%, which is the case here in this example, we multiply by 100% plus that 5% or 105%. Now it's easier to work with decimals here, so we'll turn 105% into 1.05. So each year if we multiply the uh, original amount or the growing amount by 1.05, that will increase that amount by 5%. So we'll keep that in mind. Let's have a look at how it works on $4,000 for five years here. So at the end of the first year, uh, we multiply that 4000 by 1.05. Then we multiply in the second year the amount we had for the first year uh, by 1.05. And then in the third year, we multiply that growing amount by 1.05. So each time, the amount we calculate on is the investment value at the time not the original investment value like we saw in simple interest. Uh, we have another couple of years of going so we'll, we will uh, multiply in the fourth year by 1.05 and again in the fifth year by 1.05. So we're multiplying the previous amounts by 1.05 including the interest and including the original. So we started off with in the first year increasing $4,000 by 5%. Then in the second year we're increasing that by 5% and that by 5%. Can you see how we're getting interest on our interest? And we keep going in that way. So on the calculator, if we did all those calculations, all those multiplications, we will get a total of $5,105. Now that does include the $4,000 we started with, but still $4,000 has grown to be $5,105 and I rounded that off to the nearest dollar. We were asked in a sentence form, so we'll answer in a sentence form. The investment amount, the total amount, has grown to $5,105. It's not all interest, but, uh, but, but a fair bit of it is. Okay, now there's a compound interest formula we can use as well, so let's have a look at the parts of that. It's A equals P outside of 1 plus R to the power of N. The A stands for the final amount of the investment. Now that's going to include, just a word of warning, that, that final amount of the investment is going to include the original principle that we put in plus any interest that's been accrued. P stands for the principle, which is the original amount invested. And then the R stands for the interest rate per compounding period. We'll have to be careful about that in, in a future example that we're going to have a look at. And that interest rate is um, expressed in decimal form mostly. And that N is uh, the number of compounding time periods. Sounds like a mouthful, mouthful, but we'll see a really good example in a minute. So that's our compound interest formula. Now, because uh, it's a bit of a an interesting situation. It's called the compound interest formula but in a crazy sort of uh, situation it doesn't work out compound interest. We said the A is the amount in the account including the principal. So what we've got to do is couple the compound interest formula. If we actually want to find out compound interest we've got to find the amount, the total amount in the account, the total amount that the investment has grown to and if we want just the compound interest section, we have to take off the principal 
to just find the amount that it's grown. So we use this little formula here, uh, I equals A minus P. The I is just the compound interest bit. And to get that, we uh, take the A, the final amount of the investment, and take off the principal that we started with, and we'll just get that amount that it's grown, that just, that, uh, just that compound interest amount. So we kind of have to do a bit of work here. We have to use the compound interest formula, which is kind of poorly named, really, if you ask me. And we have to uh, take that, the answer we get from that, and we have to take off the principal if we were asked to just find the compound interest amount. All right, so they're the two uh, sort of joint formulas we're working with here. This example, we'll see, uh, it's, a, it's a big example, we'll go through carefully. Uh, example two, $6,000 is invested at 12% per annum, and I'm going to have a look at it compounding in various ways, sometimes yearly, sometimes six monthly, etc., for four years. So let's have a look how that pans out and how it differs depending on the compounding period that we're talking about. The first step is to find the amount of each investment if it is compounding yearly. Now we're going to be using the uh, A equals P outside of 1 plus R to the N, which is the called the compound, uh, compound interest formula, but it actually works out the amount of each investment. Amount, so the A is the amount. Uh, so we're going to use that. Now in this one, let's have a look at all of our values we're plugging in here. The principal is 6,000, fair enough. The interest rate for a yearly situation is 12%. That's just uh, the decimal of decimal version of 12% is 0 0.12, so that goes in there. And how many years do we have? Four years. So that's uh, a yearly scenario where we're just plugging in annual amounts of interest rate and time periods into the R and the N situation. So that's, uh, we're, that's just a straight substitution there. In the future ones that we're just about to have a look at, we're just going to have to adjust for different compounding periods here. But if you type that into your calculator, you'd get an amount uh, the investment has grown to. It went from $6,000 to $9,441. So uh, that's the amount in the account, the amount that it's grown to. Now let's have a look at what that would look like if it's compounding half yearly or six monthly. Uh, some textbooks call it biannually, which is not all that helpful. Um, okay, here we go. So we're going to have to make a couple of adjustments here. Let's see what we do. Uh, our principal stays the same. There's still $6,000 invested. But have a look at the interest rate and the number of time periods. We say to ourselves, well, in, if, if we earn 12% per year, every half year we're earning 6% interest. So that's why the interest rate has halved because the time frame has halved. Now we have to say to ourselves in four years how many lots of a half a year do we have? Well in four years there's eight lots of six months. There's eight half years in four years. So that's why our time periods up there uh, went from four to eight in this second section. So see how we're adjusting the interest rate and the number of time periods. So that's going to give us a slightly different answer there when we plug that in to our calculator, $9,563. Now you'll notice that uh, we uh, return a little bit more compound interest. The amount has grown a little bit higher uh, in the compounding of six monthly. And that's because each six months there's uh, an extra bit of interest that gets interest on its interest. So the more compounding periods, if we just adjust the uh, interest rate uh, sort of pro rata, uh, each, uh, the more compounding periods, the slightly more compound interest we earn. So let's have a look at another adjustment we might make. If it compounds quarterly, okay, so we're going to have to adjust for an interest rate that's per quarter, not per year, and for how many quarters there are in four years. Let's see. Okay, if there's 12% per annum in a quarter, there's a quarter of that interest. So that represents 0.12 or 0.12 divided by 4 and we get the interest rate that applies per quarter. And how many quarters are there in four years? Well there's four quarters in one year so there are 16 quarters in a four year period. So we've adjusted the interest rate and the number of time periods to reflect a different compounding period. And we'll expect, because there's a, uh, more compounding periods in this uh, third part of the example, we'll have a slightly higher uh, compound interest return here. 
$9,628, the amount uh, of this investment has grown to if it's compounded quarterly instead of yearly or half yearly. And one more example, or in one part here, compounding monthly. So we're going to need to have a look at an interest rate that's monthly and figure out how many months there are in four years. They're the two adjustments we'll need to make. If there's 12% per year and there are 12 months in a year, I think you can see that we'll earn 1% per month. So that's why the interest rate has turned into 1% uh, there. Now how many months in four years? Four lots of 12 months, 48 months. And this one, because it's compounding so uh, so regularly, it'll return the greatest amount for the final amount in the account, nine thousand six hundred and seventy-three dollars. So that's quite a quite a bit of work we've gone through. We've covered a fair amount of ground there. But you saw the adjustments. It's important that you note the adjustments. This is the annual uh, arrangements up the top here, where we're plugging in just the question, uh, the amounts from the question straight in because that's a, a yearly interest rate quoted and how many years is quoted straight out. But here we're adjusting uh, for half yearly compounding, quarterly compounding or monthly compounding. Bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it and do a few examples, I'm sure you'll be fine. Now that's the amount in each account. That's not the compound interest. So what we've got to do is couple that. If we're asked for the final amount of compound interest earned, the, the amount of compound interest alone, uh, that doesn't include the principal. We're going to have to follow this formula here, the little paired formula I talked about before. Interest, uh, the compound interest equals the amount in the account, which is kind of the answer to the first part here on the left. And well, if we take off the principal off each of those amounts that we got for our answers in the first section, we will find just the amount that's the compound interest section. So we're going to take off the principal, which in this case was $6,000, off the answer we got for the first section. Okay, so in the first bit here, if we take $6,000 off the answer uh, to the final amount of each investment, we'll find just the compound interest section. And if we do that for each of these, take $6,000 off, we're just taking the amounts we got in the first uh, calculation and we're taking the principal off each of them just to find that compound interest component here. Because, um, yeah, it uh, would be misleading otherwise to, um, to think that the whole amount is compound interest when uh, $6,000 of it was what the person invested in the first place. So that compound interest, those compound interest amounts on the right hand side, that's how much compound interest has been earned on the $6,000. Uh, and the first section was the final amount of the investment, including the principal. So we have to uh, do a bit of work there to find the just the compound interest section. So that's compound interest. We found it, we had a look at it by repeated multiplication and uh, also by the compound interest formula coupled with another formula to help us find just the compound interest uh, component of that. hope that helps. Uh, do plenty of work, do plenty of practice, get plenty of, um, of revision in and uh, I'm sure it'll all sink in. Thanks for listening.